Yeah. What's an adolescent? An adolescent? Yeah. Someone who's in, gone into puberty. Someone who's gone into puberty. Had Aisha gone into puberty at six years old? At the age of six, no. No. So she wasn't an adolescent then, was she? Right, but it doesn't mean that she can't make her decision on her own. No, it really does. Do you, do you think that Saudi Arabia should allow six-year-old children to marry? Again, like I said, with regards to people, they vary. Like, I've already explained that, as he said. I've explained to you the situation. I said, if I was in the position of Abu Bakr... Which wasn't my question. My question was, you're, do you're, you think that Saudi Arabia should allow six-year-old children to marry? Yes and no. Yes and no. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, that should shock you. So, um, the obviously, the, the question is, the charge is Mohammed is a pedophile. I'll pull it up So, so the charge is Mohammed is a pedophile. So, we've we've got to we've got to first define the term pedophile. What I mean, the, the, I think the term is uncontroversial. Uncontrovertible. A paedophile is someone who is sexually active with children, which obviously therefore implies that we define what a child is. A child, and I think this is also incontrovertible, a child is someone who is mentally and physically distinguishable from an adult in that they are prepubescent and they don't have the same mental capacities in terms of making decisions that adults do. Is there, do you want to modify any of those definitions, change any of those, add or take away? Are you very happy with the definitions? Right, okay, so let's start with the engagement of Mohammed to Aisha. What age was Aisha when she was engaged to Muhammad? According to the sources. According, according to, to the sources. sources. According to Islamic sources. Well, put that mic on his mouth. With regards to the, with regards to the engagement, I can't say 100% I know about that. With regards to the consummation, consummation of the marriage, nine years old. Nine years old. So, the, 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 the point that I would make to you, if you want to stand in the middle, bro. If you want to stand Actually, you do, you do, Billy. Yeah. Stand in the middle. So, hold, yeah. hold it between us. Between us? We can do. So, so uh, uh, you, you've admitted, and that's fair enough, that you're not familiar with the sources. I am... With, one, with, well, with regards me, to the engagement. Let me finish. Yes, exactly. You're not familiar with the sources, because we're starting with the engagement, about the sources. Let me tell you what the sources say. Sahih al-Bukhari... As far as I know, it's, it's six, but I don't want to miss It is six, so yeah. That's Sahih al-Bukhari. Now, or do you believe that a child of six years old... Are you, are you stood here saying that children at six years old can agree to marry, that they have the mental faculties to understand what they're entering into, and therefore you would argue for a change in the law that allows six-year-olds to agree to marriage. Is that your position? So my position, with regards to marriage of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, is that when you, when you look to the, the advancement, when it comes to the, the development of boys, girls, the advancement towards puberty, yep. it varies depending upon geography. Yes. They advance at different ages. Okay. When it comes to the women, women in the hotter climates, yep. they advance more quicker than, for example, the women in milder climates such as here in Europe. Yep. This is something I'm sure that you agree with. No, I don't agree with that. You don't agree with it's that? It's a completely false argument. Totally okay. false and it's not supported right. by any, right. any study at all. None. Right. Child right. anyway. Studies anyway. in childhood development. Yep. And let's be frank, Western education excels so on this topic it, over what's going it, off in Saudi Arabia. Let me finish. Yeah. Western education has demonstrated through concise studies of the human brain that the frontal lobes of six-year-olds, which is the moral aspect where the moral decision-making occurs, whole does not occur until after, much after puberty. A six-year-old who hasn't entered into puberty, as Aisha had not entered into puberty, would not have the frontal lobes to make a moral decision. 
That's a fact. Can I speak now? That's a fact. Yeah, go on. Should we, should we, should we just have a back and forth? Should we time it? How are we going to do it? Would you like to time it? I don't mind. I'll just have a discussion. Let's let's go as, long as, as, long as, as long as I'm not okay. just speaking for five minutes over you and it's not like... Vice versa. Just, 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 so so just let's, do, let's do... Amicable conversation. Agreed. Let's do point by point. One point, right. one point. Backwards so and forwards. With, with regards to the... As you said, like ac the academia basically says that no, it's not correct. There, the prefrontal lobe it, it matures at such and such an age. Post puberty. Now, when it when it comes to, for example, I, as I said, the advancement of and and I, I will let me hold it. Here. Thank you. I will, and and this is something where I'm willing to go away, and I and I hope that we do this, and I'll, I'll come back. With the evidence yep. regarding this subject, with regards to the advancement sure. as well, yeah, regarding the advancement of the, of the young boys and the young girls. Yeah. Now, at the time of just after the time of the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, may blessings and peace be upon him. You may have heard of the one of the four imams from the uh, madahib, Imam al Shafi'i, one of, from one of the four madhabs. Now, when he travelled to Al Yemen, he said that he noticed that the women, the girls. They, they became women at the age of nine. And another thing that I would like to say, like with regards to the, because this is something this is Because we said we were going to do point by point. Can I reply to that point? Let me finish and then you can go. We said we we're going to do point by point. Yeah, sure. sure. So but you've me, made a me, point, can I reply to it? Let me finish what I'm saying. Okay. So, the advancement from childhood to, in, to from an infant to puberty, in those climates, in that locality, was at that age, Can I reply? the age of nine. Can I reply? You see it? Can I reply now? Sure. So, the brother argued that Shafi, which was an early Muslim, said that he noticed that children had become women at nine years old. I want to point out that Shafi knew absolutely nothing about childhood development. He is not an expert and his testimony counts for why spittle. Do you, why do you say that, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. No, 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 let me finish. No, but you made no number of points. Let me finish. The reality is Shafi is not an authority on childhood development, but the authorities on childhood development point out that human beings are the same everywhere and they develop at the same rate. That is a biological fact. It does not change based on climate. That is a lie. Furthermore, furthermore, the frontal lobes, which are responsible for moral decision making, develop post puberty. Aisha, at six years old, had not entered into puberty, so her frontal lobes, responsible for moral decision making, could not have developed which means that she did not have the mental faculties to agree to a marriage. And in according to Islam, you can't make someone marry if they're not mentally capable. Is that, is that true? Is that true? Is that true? You cannot be for, a child cannot be forced into marriage, no. Agreed. A and cannot be forced into marriage. Great. Be forced, because anybody, when it comes to the uh, marital, marital contract being concluded, there must be approval. And it's got to be by consent, right? Course. Informed consent. It's got to be by consent, yes. By mentally capable people, agreed? Indeed. How is a six year old mentally capable to agree to marriage? So, you're, what you're saying, firstly, I'd like you to provide your sources with regards to, because you're, you're making claims, you're saying that across the board, like wherever the people are in yes. the world, yes. they develop the same. Yes. They develop the same. Yes. Right. Can so, you maybe pull up a, a, a yeah. clinical study, see if we can find one? Right. Um, regarding Imam al Shafi'i. Look at the frontal decision making lobes, that's what we're looking Imam for. Imam al Shafi'i. Imam al Shafi'i. Yeah. Now tell me why you are making the claim that he has absolutely no authority in that regard. Right, have great. You, have, you, have you studied who he was as a person? I, I, I will answer that question. But have you studied him? I will answer that question. The study of childhood development did not exist until the modern period. No one was studying it so in, any, in any great way. No, me... Shafi, Shafi, when it comes to the question of childhood development, is as ignorant as pretty much everyone else listening to this debate. He knows as little as we do. But what we do know, well, a bit like yours, a bit like yours, a bit like yours, what we do know 
what we do know, and you can check this. Have you found a study yet? Uh, not a study, but, keep, not, but a website. Keep, keep looking. Links to studies. Go what, what, right, what? To make, to make, to make it Sorry, honest. let me finish. 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 You have asked me to provide sources. What are your academic sources that demonstrate that children in hot climates develop their frontal lobes earlier, pre-pubescently, before anyone else? What are yours? Have you got them now? Right, no, no, no. You've asked me for evidence. We right. can do the same. But you're, you're, you're saying that you have it, basically. If you're... Okay. So... You, I believe it's a on, US government health website. Yes, on an American government health website. So this is a government health website in the USA. It states this. The development and maturation of the prefrontal cortex occurs primarily during adolescence and is fully accomplished at the age of 25 years old. The development of prefrontal cortex is very important for complex behavioral performance as this region is the brain that helps to accomplish and execute those brain right. functions. Let me just let me just no, state what that no, means. You're making a bit of a monologue. We're having a, we're having a dialogue. Right, go on, ask a question. Right. So before you were saying that it's basically impossible for somebody at that age, the age of six, to have prefrontal cortex development, right? Correct. Right. That source that we just pulled up did not say that. It did. No, it didn't. What's an adolescent? No, no, no. It, that is the same it's talking about adolescence. What is an aceledon? An aceledon. What's know. an adolescent? An adolescent? Yeah. Someone who's in, gone into puberty. Someone who's gone into puberty. Had Aisha gone into puberty at six years old? At the age of six, no. No. So she wasn't an adolescent then, was she? Right, but it doesn't mean that she can't make her decision on certain things. No, it really does. That's exactly what that's... That's exactly what that study demonstrates. You, you're an adolescent when you go into puberty. Aisha, by the fact that Mohammed waited three years to have sex with her and had sex with her apparently when she started menstruating, proves that she wasn't an adolescent at the time that we, she supposedly agreed to marry him. Which means that that poor little girl did not have the mental capacity to agree to a marriage. How would you reply to that? Nobody says that. That she didn't have the capacity. She couldn't have because she wasn't an adolescent. She was six. Sorry. She was six. She was six yes. And but, she was prepubescent, wasn't she? <laughs> means she didn't have periods. She's six. She didn't have periods, so that means she is not an adolescent, which means that her frontal lobes had not developed, which means she did not have the mental capacity to agree to a moral choice. No six-year-old does. They're robots. You tell them to do something and they say yes or no, but they can't explain the moral reasons for it. Yeah. But when it comes to certain scientific findings... Like the right. ones we've just quoted. Right. So, say for example now, it says that somebody, when it comes to maturity, someone yes. becoming mature, yes. somebody being able to make decisions for themselves. Yes. And if it says <coughs> this is around the age of 12, for example, right? Go on. Or adolescence, whatever it is. Yeah. Right? Does that mean that every single person at that age has become mature? Right. Great like, question. Mature, maturity can come to someone at the age of 25. M may, I ask, may I answer that question? You have people, for example, now 30, 40, 50. Like they're mature individual, individuals and they can't make that right. <coughs> may, may I answer that question? You understand? So it's not something that across the board, like for example, that person's hit adolescence, so because of that, they have become mature enough, they have become um, able to make decisions for themselves. May I ask, answer that question? You understand? So it's not something that across the board. May I answer that question? Go for it. So yes, of course, there are people with mental illnesses who do not mature. They do not mature. Now, the thing is, his argument is that there are immature adults with no mental illness. And he's completely right. But that doesn't mean that a prepubescent, non-adolescent child has the capacity to make a mental choice. That is a non sequitur argument. The premise does not lead to the conclusion. The fact of the matter, and it is a fact, it is a biological fact, Six-year-olds cannot make complex moral choices and choosing to have, be in a, um, a family 
with another adult is a complex moral choice. A 50-something year old. A 50-something year old. I would ask you, point to me another six-year-old that can make a complex moral choice. Would you, let me ask you this question. Have you got children? No. Do a thought experiment with me. <coughs> Would you marry your six-year-old daughter? Sorry? Oh, my daughter? Yes, would you marry a... a my daughter, no. Of course no. <coughs> why not? My own daughter. <coughs> yes, why not? Incest. What? It's incest. No, I didn't ask that question. Would you marry your daughter? You're, you're just playing semantic silly games. No, I'm asking your question. Would you allow your daughter, who is please, six years old, to marry? Do not patronize. Try not, please, do not patronize me. <coughs> what he meant was, would you marry... It, it was obvious what I meant. Yeah. No, you said, would you marry your six-year-old daughter? And then you became patronizing. I answered your question. You, you did silly semantics. You know that's not what was being asked. All right, so uh, let me rephrase the question. So what, am I supposed to read your mind in your heart? I think everyone, everyone else recognized what question was being asked. Yep. Did you understand it? Yes. Did you understand it? Did you understand it? <coughs> what an, uh, amazing, only the Muslims didn't understand it. Excuse me. So, you said, would you marry your own daughter? How stupid are you? Which is obviously the question of consent. Anyone with a brain recognized that? I my daughter, I said no. It's Look, I'm not even going to have this argument with you. Let anyone who's watching so, on camera so, so, and now make their own judgment so about whether I was being patronizing or whether you was being facetious. So let them make the judgment. Let's not argue about whether you were being facetious or I was being patronizing. Right. Let's get back to the argument. Would you consent to your six-year-old daughter marrying a 54-year-old man? My six-year-old daughter. Your six-year-old daughter. The fact would that you, you haven't instantly would said you no consent? Is really it is really concerning. <laughs> the fact that you have to think this over is terrifying. It is terrifying. It is terrifying that you might. Yeah. Even... You asked me that question. Okay. Let, when, let, it, when it no. Okay. Would you marry? Would you allow your six-year-old daughter to marry a fifty-four-year-old man? No. Would, would you? Kid. Hell no. Would you? I would slay any man right, who suggested that. <laughs> now, would you allow your six-year-old daughter? See how quick that was. Would you allow your six-year-old daughter to marry a fifty-four-year-old man? No. If it was the Prophet Muhammad, yeah. alayhi salatu wasalam, yeah. and she, my daughter, was as advanced as Aisha was, because yeah. we know, as we know from the history, from who she was, yeah. with regards to how she was far ahead of other women of her time. This is a long, she, this is a long way yeah, yeah. of saying yes or no. Yeah, because this, no, no, yeah, yeah, her, yes listen, no answer. because yeah, my daughter is not Aisha, and the man is not the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu So let me ask you this question. Do you want to keep speaking over me, or can I respond to uh, you? Uh, uh, no, go on, answer my question. Right, right, I'm trying to, yeah. but you keep trying to speak over me. So, if my daughter was Aisha, if I was Abu Bakr, which you're not. I didn't ask you that question. Yeah. Well, no, my I, question I, in this day and age, I, see, you're giving me a hypothetical man, a hypothetical daughter. I don't know my, what my daughter would be like. Okay. I don't know who the man would be. Let me, let, me, let me rephrase the question in a very concrete way. Do you advocate for changing the law that would allow six year olds to consent to marriage? In this country? Yes. Do I advocate for it? Okay, yes. don't answer it, don't answer it. He's fooling you. Wallah, he's fooling you. Wallah, he's fooling you. Simple question. I don't... Why is, he, why is he embarrassed to answer that question? In the first century, why? everyone is mine. Is why is his current right. religionist uh, embarrassed to be mine? Let me ask you this question. To the first century, Do you think Saudi everyone, Arabia should allow six-year-olds to get married? Okay, do you want to... Allah, he just goes, oh no, oh no, no, guys. Okay, is this between me and... <laughs> no, no, some point we'll, we'll come across... Guys, I'm, I'm just... this is not a hard question. It's a simple yes or no. And my problem is that he's hesitant to answer the question. I'll ask you the question. I'll ask the question again. Would you, do you think that Saudi Arabia should allow six-year-old children to marry? Again, like I said, with regards to people, they vary. Like, I've already explained it as he said. I've explained to you the situation. I said if I was in the position of Abu Bakr... Which wasn't my question. That's not my question. I'll state my question again. Do you think that Saudi Arabia should allow six-year-olds to marry? Do you believe that women should be not allowed to teach? Don't answer a question with a question. The question was, do you think... Do, do you think... Two against one, come and stand in the corner. It's all right, guys, look, there's no need, there's no need... Look, like, the, the, let's be fair to this brother, he did ask him to stop. Okay, so I'm going to do the same. You said yeah. you're Right? Bro, 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 one second, one second, bro, one second. So, so the reality is, guys, this is why it matters 
what Mohammed did. Because if Mohammed is meant to be the best example, and he married a six-year-old child, which he did, then that means that that is the best example that we should all be following. Now, it doesn't mean, it doesn't follow, it doesn't follow, doesn't follow, it doesn't follow that every Muslim has to marry a six-year-old child, but it does follow that it should be possible that some Muslims should be able to marry a six-year-old child. So how would you reply to that? No, you're trying to hijack the thing and make it go as you want it to go. Bro, you had the chance to answer the question and you dodged it. Question. I the question that I you, you, and neither was to I the question I asked. I asked. Neither was to I the question that I asked. You, in two ways. No, you didn't answer my question at all. I answered you in two ways. But anyway, um, with regards to marrying children, marrying children. Yeah. With regards to the question I asked you, go on. Do you believe that women should not be allowed to teach? Right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show to you what answering the question looks like. Okay. The question was, yeah. do I as a Christian believe that women should be allowed to teach? My answer, yes, they should. Okay. Why do you believe that? Why do I believe that? Because women have dignity and capacity as teachers. You see, ladies and gentlemen, that's what it looks like to answer a question. Now let me ask him a question. The original question. Do you believe that Saudi Arabia should allow six-year-old no, no, children to marry? Six-year-old children. Again, like I've said previously, with regards to marriage, with regards to marriage, with regards to, with, Boris, please, with regards to marriage, if there is, for example, a 25-year-old woman, and she is not deemed to be someone who can form decisions for herself. She's not deemed to be someone who is in a position where she should be getting married. Yep. She's immature. Yep. Then she shouldn't be marrying someone even if it's the same age. But that wasn't my understand. question. My question was, you're, do you're, you're, you think that Saudi Arabia should allow six-year-old children to marry? Yes and no. Yes and no. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, that should shock you. Yes. He has stood here and said, that six-year-old children should be allowed to marry. Okay. That is a problem. So anyway, so anyway, and it is a problem so anyway, that emerges out of the example of Muhammad, right. and that is exactly why, as a Christian, I reject the example of Muhammad and now a follower of Jesus Christ. Anyway, anyway, so, you're a follower of Jesus? I'm so sorry. No, 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 I'm so sorry. After, question let, let, him, after. let him talk. Right. Let him talk. Okay, so anyhow, anyhow, as I was saying, with regards to, because you asked me the question regarding Aisha, and I gave you an answer, I gave you two answers. I said, regarding um, my daughter, hypothetical yeah. daughter, yeah. I don't know what her mental capacity would be. And the guy, I don't know who, what he's going to be like. Do you understand? And I gave, I said, if I was Abu Bakr at the time of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, I would, if I was in his position, I would permit what he permitted. Do you understand? So marrying six-year-olds? Exactly what he did. Exactly he what he did. What he, gave his, what he gave his daughter away. He was by, he was of the closest to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. He was, the revelation was given whilst he was still alive, whilst, yeah. whilst he was present. Do you understand? He knew the man, the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, prior to his revelation, the revelation coming All of us, all, right. right. Let, no, 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 come on, you've been speaking for like five minutes Not straight. Not really. Yes, you have. So, you're saying, should Saudi Arabia, your question is, should they permit six You've years already answered that yes. question. You yes. said yes. Yes, right. I, did, yes. I didn't just say straight a yes. yes is a yes. No, I didn't there just is say no, yes. no if you no, say no, yes. No, 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 you're twisting. I said yes, you I You can't don't. say yes or no. That's, yes the, yes that's, no. that, that's the law of I'll mutual contradiction. There you go. So that's a yes. So that's a yes. So that's a yes. There's no no. There's that. That's a yes. It can also be a no as well. It's called, for example, that's non sequitur logic. I can say yes. That's non sequitur logic. That breaks the law of contradiction. I can say no because this person is. That breaks the law of contradiction. So why do you choose yes? That has to break. So why do you choose yes? Because if you're saying Saying yes, yes no, no. if saying you're saying yes then. under any circumstances, you've said yes. No, no. We never said to yes the under question. any circumstances. No, no. We never made that I never claim. claimed that you did. Oh, okay, I thought you just did. Yeah, you weren't listening. Okay, repeat yourself. <laughs> so what I said was that if you permit the marriage of children in any circumstances, you've agreed to the marrying of children. Right. And we've already established, and we've already established that six-year-old children Six-year-old children 
do not have the frontal lobe development ready to make moral choices. Islam is bad guidance because it's based on the ignorance of childhood development. Ignorance that we in the West do not share. And that is why, and that is why the entire world is raising the age of consent. There is no country anywhere in the world that is arguing to lower the age of consent. And the reason why is because the evidence is clear. Children cannot consent. May you spit in, calm down. You're preaching now. Guys, please. Look. Sorry, I was raising my voice because they were interrupting. You can't my friend. You can't yes. respond. If you know, say yes or no. Say anyway, yes or no. guys, brothers, please. Okay. I've got it, inshallah. Just okay. wait. Okay. I just want to ask a question for myself. Ikhwan, afterwards, please. Please, no, brother. Please. Okay. 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 okay, that's fine. Okay. 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 No, no, let him talk. We're meant to be having a dialogue. If he, if he accepts the question, or do you want to do it afterwards? Afterwards. Let's ask your question. Fine. With regards to age of consent, with regards to marriage. Yeah. What does Christianity teach you regarding that? Sorry? Christianity, you're Christian, right? Okay, yes. Right, what does your religion teach regarding that? That is a great question. And I will be as brief what's, as I possibly... I, I will be as brief as I possibly can. Within the Christian faith... The Bible, the Bible. Uh, no, 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 you, you, you've asked me a question, now let me answer. I, I'm let, me, let me answer. Let me answer. Yeah, You've asked a question. The Bible, you the no, 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 let me Bible. answer. So, the Christian the faith teaches this. The Bible. Where the Christian faith teaches this. That where the apostles or prophets are silent, you act according to the best knowledge available. And we know this because the scriptures command us, they command us to reason, and they command us to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Which means that... As Christians learn about the environment or they learn about childhood development, we are free to pass laws according to the best knowledge. And that means that the Christian world over history has consistently raised the age of consent higher and higher. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now, ladies and gentlemen, notice the interruption. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's a real difference to Islam because Islam teaches that Muhammad is the best example that he can't be beaten that therefore if Muhammad does something it should be permissible to you unless there's a clear injunction against it example Muhammad had more than four wives but there is a clear injunction in the Quran that you as Muslims can only have four wives but Muhammad married a six-year-old child and there is no injunction in any Islamic literature forbidding any Muslim man from marrying a six-year-old okay. child. Okay. Which okay. means okay. that whilst okay. Muslims are not obliged to marry six-year-old children, they can marry six-year-old okay. children and there's no basis to object. But in Christianity we can object because in Christianity we have space for other kinds of learning. It's why science was born in the Western Christian world rather than the Islamic world. You don't believe you're being honest. Science was born in the Christian world, did you say? Modern science was born in the Christian world. That's wrong. That's another discussion with regards, with regards to science. Anyway, so Bob has responded saying that in Christian faith, so you're saying like with the advancement of time, you can basically tweak tweak rulings, right? So if it's like nine years old then, as time goes by, you can you can put it up to thirteen, you can put it up to fifteen. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so as so as so as we learn, right. as we learn so who, about things, we can change. Who puts, yeah. who puts the new injunctions in place? Like we do. We do. Based so on permission based on sufficient learning. So without div without divine revelation, you change you tweak it. Right, so let me explain that point because so it's, 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 a it's a very good point. It's, it's a very good point. Let me right. explain no, it. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm going to explain it. Right. So go on then. Go on. Yeah, I'll take your point on board and I'll respond. Right. So the Bible itself does not categorically say that there is a minimum age, minimum age of regards to marriage and no. consummation, right? About divine right. But does it say yeah. that? Does the Bible say so, that? It's all right, I've got him. Does, does the Bible, you haven't got nothing? Yeah. Um, does the Bible 
does the Bible give a minimum age with regards to marriage? Doesn't need to. Question. Doesn't need to. Doesn't need to. Why? Doesn't need to. Why? Right. Great question. The reason why the Bible doesn't need. You said it goes to the best allow me. Allow me to. Hello. <laughs> right. So. So. So let me let me let me address this question. There's teleological ethics and there's deontic ethics. Islam follows the principle of deontic ethics, i.e. ethics derived from rules. Christianity follows teleological ethics, which means ethics aimed towards an end. Teleological ethics about the question of sexual maturity is based upon the end of what is good for the parties involved. Which means that within teleological ethics, there is space and room to change the age in which it becomes acceptable to have sex. In Islam, they follow deontic ethics, i.e. ethics based on rules. And in Islam, it is permissible to have sex with a nine-year-old child. Because Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old child. So that answers your question. Christianity. Do you even know what teleological and deontic mean? You just explained it. What, what does teleological mean? You just explained it. You just explained it. Are you, are you, questioning, are you questioning... Yes, I, I don't think... Yes, I question that you do not understand teleological. Anyway. I don't believe you anyway, understand the word. This is, this is not what we're discussing. Do you know what hypnopompic means? No. No, fine. There you go. I, do you I know what teleological means? Do you know what hypnopompic means? No, no, I don't. Right. So but teleological is related to the question. Perhaps we don't know a difference. No, teleological is related to the question. Do you know what crepuscular means? Teleological. You know again, means? again. No, I don't. I'm happy to, to learn. Definition. We're not here to debate definition. Oh, no, anyway. but those are crucial to the debate. So, you believe the Bible is divine? Yes, of course, yes. And the best of guidance is within the Bible? Yes. So why did God not say from the beginning you cannot marry a one-year-old in the Bible? Right. Or you cannot marry a baby? Right. That's a great question and I'm happy to answer it. Because even this answer is better than the answer that Islam gives. Why didn't God say clearly, don't marry these children? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to answer that very question. It's simple. Because people were stubborn and ignorant and they wouldn't have been able to hear it. It's the same reason why God, God it, when in the, uh, to the people of Israel, in generation, they were stubborn and ignorant. allowed them to divorce. Why? Because they were too stubborn and ignorant to hear if God, they were hard-hearted people. Now, how is that better than Muhammad? I'll tell you how that's better than Muhammad. Muhammad is supposedly the best example that had sex with a nine-year-old child. Now the reality is that that means he is an example to all of these Muslims. Which means that it is permissible in Islam to have sex with nine-year-old children. I will respond to his point by the way. Just to let you know everyone, Aisha was already engaged to someone else before Muhammad married her. Yes. What does that tell? This it tells us sexual maturity at that time for that girl was in place. Let me reply so to that. So this means it was normal for that age and time. This is the thing that you guys can't You're understand. Mistaken. You're mistaken. You're mistaken. You can't let, 15, 15 years ago. Let me reply to that. So let me reply to that. Let me reply to that. Let me reply to that. No, 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 I'm going to reply. I'll let you come back. 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 No, I will let you come back. The reason why this argument is fallacious is just because a culture was in the habit of marrying children does not mean that they were not children. It just... Sexual maturity was attained at that age because even nowadays... Was she prepubescent? Now let me let me tell you. Was she prepubescent? Was she prepubescent? Look, we're having a discussion and you're kidnapping her. Even nowadays. Brother, do you want to come back to this conversation? Yeah, go on. Bro. So it's just a simple question. Do you think nine year olds today are exactly the same as nine year olds back then? Or is there a clear difference? Do you at least admit that? Biologically they're the same. Oh, and what and in other ways how are they different? They're socially and culturally different, but biologically they're the same. Okay. That's what look that's what answering the question looks like.
Same topic. Same topic. I'll ignore that again. I'll still have my question. When it By the way, yeah. any Muslim who's saying that Rebecca was three years old in the Bible, yeah. I challenge you to find me the passage that says that. Guess, use Google and show me where in the Bible it says Rebecca was three. You're lying. You're lying. Sorry, I got carried away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I got carried away. Okay, let's bring it down a tone. Carry on. I apologize. Let's everybody. Let carry on. Go on. Here we go. Go on. He's not Muslim, by the way. Go on. Bro, bro. Focus. So where were we? Where were we? Just gone off and so, so we were talking about. We were talking about. So my, yeah, yeah, so, so the, the key point oh, yeah. that we were talking about the fact that the Bible does right. allows us to make our own judgments right. about but, what. But now let me ask yeah. you this question. Now in Britain, yes. it has a different law with regards to the age of consent. Yes. In comparison to Spain. Yes. Italy, Spain, America, yep. Britain, yep. they all vary. Yes. With regards to the yes. age of consent. That's right. Right. So, are you telling me that? Britain is is more upon is more closer to the Bible and Christianity than Spain is. Uh, how how do you decide which of those who are legislating this should be the minimum age? This should be the minimum age. This yeah. minimum, which of them are correct? So to? so allow me because uh, you're, you're saying yeah, go on. allow me to respond. Yeah. The, the the key thing that you've got to grasp is that the Christian ethical system is teleological in principle, and teleological is about looking at what virtues create what best characters as opposed to a deontic ethical system which is what Islam is which is about which rules are the best and that's a fundamental difference between our two religions so let me let me answer the question to the question of sexual ethics the end goal that we should be concerned with is what is in the best interest of the parties that are involved and that obviously involves their mental, emotional and physical health. And it does not take anyone of any great genius to recognize that children are not helped in terms of their mental, physical health by marrying prepubescently, by marrying too early or by having sex too early. Which means that, to answer your question directly, when we study the development of chi childhood development, we must change our laws according to the best information. And the best information is what we have and we make our decisions on that, not based like sheep just following the example of a Bedouin who didn't understand that a six-year-old could not marry and that a nine-year-old was too young for sex. Brothers, Ikhwan, please, let me, let me have a dialogue with him, please. Some Muslims do. Some Muslims do. Engage me, please, because Sorry, we engage yeah, tonight, right. Mr. going to take it. Absolutely right. Sorry. Brother, ask him a simple no. question. Brother. The age of Asha. Let him, let him do it. the first time he's had let a him conversation do it. with the age of Asha. Every week he comes, he gets educated. And what? He comes back again next week. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry, are we letting them diving in now? Please let him talk. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, to be honest, I think he needs, he needs <laughs> Hashim like, Shumsi, some, some sort of... Let the guy speak! He comes to the corner and says... The Muslims are basically upset that the guy isn't representing Islam strong enough. In other words, he's losing the argument and the Muslims are heckling him because he's losing the argument. Let him talk. No, let him talk. Let him talk. You can't misrepresent okay. Muslims like that. Okay. So wrong. Okay, step that's step 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 okay, step okay. I know you don't care about one, that's what nobody talks to you. As I said earlier, please don't patronize me. Because I'm not I, for example, now I could stand here, I could throw out loads of points towards you. I could feel that I made my point. Do you see it? That you can respond.
perform well, but yep. I'm not going to say that if you're losing an argument, for example, in front of just to rile up the crowd. Do you see it? It's just part of the game of Speaker's Corner, bro. Enjoy. It's, I don't see it as a game. That's fair. You don't see it as a game. We see it as a genuine dialogue. We want to learn from one another. I'm not trying to bang you. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm not trying to bang you. I'm learning. Hold on, please. I'm not trying to humiliate you. Bro, bro, let him talk. I'm, a, I'm the one advocating just, that I you just, should get to listen, speak right listen, now. Listen, I'm not here. I just want to make it clear. I'm not here. I know this is something when it comes to Speaker's Corner. This is perhaps a mentality a lot of people come with. They come here, they want to overpower the next person in speech. Let's come, come to the topic, bro. Yeah? So please, I ask you respectfully, let's not try and belittle one another. I'm not, I've not done that at all in this discussion with you. That's true. That's very true. I'm yes, discussing that's true. with you. That's, that's true. true. You so haven't. I ask you kindly, you please do well not do that to me. If you well. felt that I was belittling you, I apologise sincerely. That certainly wasn't my intention. Right. Thank you. So, um, when it comes to, like, we're still on the topic of age of consent. Yes. Now, for example, now you've got in, wherever it's Portugal or Spain, where yeah. it says minimum age, 14. Yes. Right. Now, let's say a girl does not develop at the age of 14. Yeah. She becomes pubescent at the age of 15. Yeah. So that law is therefore permitting sex with somebody who's not sexually mature. I agree. Right. And that would be an argument to raise the age of consent. Right. Now, Islamically, when it comes to sexual maturity, when it comes to sexual intercourse yes. within marriage, the, yes. within the realms of marriage, yes. it can only be done when the person is pubescent. That's one of the conditions of it. Yes. You understand? It's not, I mean, it's not like, if we said, for example, in Islam, it says the minimum age is 14, the minimum age is 15, you could get a, a, a boy who, who becomes pubescent at the age of 16. Yeah. So therefore, you're permitting a person, a young boy, to have sex at the age of 15 when he's still a minor. Do you, you think, let me, let me come back to you, do you think that just because someone starts puberty, that that suddenly means that they are ready to have sexual relations. Just because they bleed, they're ready to breed. Because as you know, when it comes to um, sexual intercourse in Islam, the person has to be within a marital contract. Uh, that, 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 right? no, no, no. We're talking about capacity. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. Talking about mental capacity. So they need to be within married, then he's been married, and also with regards to mental capacity, there's different conditions. As the brother said, yep. when it comes to, to marriage, yep. there's conditions that must be in place. One of them being sexual maturity. Right, and Aisha was incapable of having any of those things. It's still going back to the... the because brother, she's please, the please, example please, you're brother, following. Please, 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 how, how was please. that the case? Bro? Because Ikhwan, Muhammad please. had sex with no, Aisha. I'll let you guys take over. No, 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 I'm trying to engage one-on-one. On one okay, one Sorry, I oh. it's my fault. I responded to both of them. I should have ignored them. So, sorry, continue. So my point is, the reason why they... What's your name, by the way? Kyron. Sorry? Kyron. Kyron. That's a really nice name. Thank you. Nice. Bob. Irish. Yeah. So Kyron, nice the, 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 reason, the reason why this is... In, the reason why this is important. The reason why this is important is because if you're saying that Muhammad is the best example, it naturally follows that what Muhammad did, at least unless there's a contrary injunction, must be at least, at the very least, permissible. That's logical, it seems to follow. So if Muhammad had sex with a nine-year-old child and married a prepubescent girl at six, then at the very least it has to be permissible for you to marry a prepubescent girl at six and a nine-year-old who let's just for the sake of charity and just because I don't want to get caught up on it, enters puberty at nine. But just because someone enters puberty at nine, let's say they do, it does not mean that they are physically or mentally able to bear children or to take on the responsibilities of marriage. And, and there is no evidence, no evidence that Aisha had that mental capacity. Aisha is described as playing with dolls. Is someone who plays with dolls considered mature or immature? That's not a solid argument, but I, I don't want to interrupt you, so go ahead. You did interrupt. Sorry, I apologise. I apologize would you, would you I, I normatively, I'm would you sorry. normatively describe someone playing with dolls as adolescent okay. or childish? Sorry. I just, as I was saying before, regarding the age of sexual maturity, yeah. that is one of the conditions when it comes to yeah, we got that. someone consummating a marriage. Yeah, we got that. Right? And the other, you know, other conditions as well, with regards to uh, a, a married, marital, a consummation of the marriage. Yeah. 
Um, regarding six years old, remember at the beginning of the discussion I said, with regards to the conclusion of the contract, however I worded it, yeah. I wasn't sure. I'd have to, I'd have to check. I'm sure. And I, and I, and I. I'm 100% sure. Fine, I'll go right and check it. Is with it regards, with regards to the, cons with regards the, to the, with regards to the consummation, to I'm not taking that away. Nine years old versus nine. Okay, I'm not. I'm not denying. I'm not going to say no. It's 18. Okay, yep, this is yep, yep, yep. right. But as I've said, He's gonna with regards to like these things, Islamically, if the person is 16, if for example, a girl is 17 years old, yeah, and she's not sexually mature, brother, please. She's 17 years old and she's not sexually mature. Yep. She cannot. Right. Let, let me address. Can I address that point? Because it's a it's a fair counterpoint. What do we do about? Um, when, when we've got a law in place where there are examples of people not entering into puberty. Sorry, so, your, please go back a few. Right. So I, I want to address your argument directly. Because your argument is that in the West we have examples where the age of consent has, ex has incidences of children entering puberty above that age. Which means obviously they could legally have sex before they've entered into puberty. Now, I agree with you that logically, from my position, that is an argument to raise the age of consent. And you're talking to someone who believes that we should raise the age of consent even above 16. I think that the age of consent should be more closer to 18, maybe 17, that's, certainly that's 18. Opinion, right. Of course, but it's based upon the study of human biology and the reason yes exactly the reason why that is consistent with my faith is because my ethical system as a christian is teleological in nature which means that it's not rule based i am being 100 percent consistent with being a christian we believe that what we're searching for is the good of the sexual parties and the good of the sexual parties is to ensure that in as many cases, with the exception of some extreme medical condition, that they are in a position mentally and physically to have sex. Whereas what you're arguing for is the other way around. You're arguing, you're arguing that because, and, and I'm being charitable here, I'm being really charitable, that because, that because a, a unique exception of a nine-year-old entered into puberty, that that means we should lower the age of consent to at least nine, meaning that there's lots of nine-year-olds. No, 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 no. Bob, let's be fair. Yeah, you said puberty. My apologies. No, let me correct myself. You're quite right. You're right, you're right, you're right. I'm going to correct myself. You said that they had to have puberty. But the problem with that is that people enter physical puberty before they have biolog yeah. before they have mental, mental, mental. capacity. But, that, but as I said, when it comes to marriage, Islamic, it's not just the condition of pubescence. Yes. There's more conditions than that. And I'm saying so Muhammad like did not meet those conditions when he married Aisha. And he said because Aisha paid with the door. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm saying Mahab, do you understand my criticism? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying that what you're saying is great. What Muhammad did is bad. Muhammad didn't even do what you're saying. But with regards to Aisha. No, no, no. No, no, we're not going to kill you. Yeah? I'm going to take you to the rest of the I'm getting shattered by your guy. <laughs> I can't stop him, bro. I need to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, afterwards, yeah. So, anyway. Right. No, we're going to practicing this time. No, 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 go ahead. I'm not practicing. Finish what he's going to say. Finish what right. he's going to say. He used to be Christian, right? Sorry, sorry. I was born, I was born in a Christian family. So the most places I'll, I'll remind you. I'll remind you. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'll remind you what he said. What he's saying is, look, so he knows that what our argument, he agrees with us. What we're saying is good in that it's not just. Uh, I agree just that. I agree that. You're saying, uh, Muhammad says, something didn't follow what we're saying. I'm saying, yeah, then that's evident. And that what we're saying is good and that what he done is bad that's basically what I am saying. saying that if you're consistent to what you're saying you have to say Muhammad was a bad man yeah. or at least wrong did you get your train of thought back right. anyway so regarding Aisha as I mentioned far back in our discussion she and you may know this yourself because you're somebody who obviously looks into the Islamic sources before you come here and you have discussions with Muslims. Yeah. The Aisha radiallahu anha, she was of the 
most when it comes to the narrations of the, the hadith, she narrated them, not the most, but perhaps the second or third after Abu Hurairah. At what age? At what age? At what age what? At what age did she narrate hadith? At what age did she narrate all these hadiths? At what age? Various ages. You no, no. She's not standing at, for example, she could be standing no, you at saying she age. did all the hadiths all at one specific age? No, no, no. no. Oh. I'm saying she did the, the hadith narrations mainly after Muhammad died. Right. How old was Aisha when Muhammad died? Right, but the thing is... But what's wrong with that? I don't understand. Because... Because... I'll let you take over. No, 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 no,
So, so maybe we can. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I can flick it at people. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a lovely day, and it was really lovely to speak to you. God bless. Are you, uh, have you had lunch? I haven't, no, no. I'm, I'm going to go out with these guys and he's going to buy me lunch. I can offer you a tea or something like that. That is so kind. I, I, on this occasion, on this occasion, and I'll, I'm going to say no, but maybe next time, time, yeah, maybe another time, let, you know. Uh, occasionally I treat people to drinks at the Marriott Hotel, so one day I'll take you if you like. Oh, what, are you working there? No, no, no. I, I just take people to the Marriott Hotel and, and buy them really expensive drinks. So, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you will, you will, because it's great. Anyway, you look so after as yourself. As long as it's a uh, non alcoholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tea, mate. Like tea, that. tea. British English breakfast tea. All right, God bless you. Right. I'm going to do a wrap up. I'm going to do a wrap up to our camera now. Of the whole conversation. Can, you can, I, wrap, well, can I wrap up as well? well you just did. Can, can we make it? Uh, I thought you did your wrap up already. I, I did. I did a, a final you statement. Want, you want to? You want to wrap Kyron up in your last? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's you, it. You, you do your wrap up. Okay. So it was a really lovely debate with Kyron. The kind of debate that I hope becomes normal in Speaker's Corner, as opposed to the thuggish behaviour that certain groups bring to the corner and that we've seen all too much of, of late. However, Chiron fundamentally was unable to justify the marriage of Muhammad to Aisha because, as we demonstrated, the frontal pre-cortex which allows people to make moral decisions is something that occurs after puberty. Aisha was not in puberty when she agreed to marry Muhammad, which means that she did not have mental capacity to agree to the marriage. Furthermore, just because someone bleeds does not mean they're ready to breathe. And unfortunately, that is the logic that Muslims are committed to. Aisha, Aisha is argued that because she entered puberty, she was ready for sex. That's not true. The reality is, the reality is that when you begin puberty, it's the beginning of development into adolescence and adulthood. It isn't the end of a process, it's the beginning. And Muslims basically have come to conclusions that are in contradiction to Muhammad's own behavior. Muslims say that you have to have entered into puberty and you have had to have mental capacity. Aisha, it was impossible for her to have these things. She was still playing with dolls. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, that Muslims don't want to follow the example of Muhammad. Which is great news, because I have a better example, and his name is Jesus Christ. The faith founded by Jesus Christ and the apostles teaches a teleological ethic. Teleological ethics don't live by rules. Teleological ethics live by virtues and the virtue in terms of sexual behavior has to be directed to the holistic health of the participants and that means that as we learn what it means to be a healthy child to be a healthy adolescent every society in the world has raised the age of consent upwards above six and above nine. Muslims, by contrast, are arguing from the exception to the rule, rather than allowing the general consensus of when women are ready for sex to govern their ideas about consent to marriage and consent to sex. In other words, the religion of the apostles and prophets 
is a better guidance than the religion of the desert Bedouin. Next time, if you're willing to be respectful, we can do it next time. We're well, you have zero respect in it. You're obviously What, by telling the truth about Muhammad? By telling the truth about Muhammad? Wait, wait, next, next, next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah, next week. Yeah, next week. I agree to debate maybe next time. Sure, next time. He knows me. I've had respect for the truth. I trust you. Go home. Go to the mental hospital. Next time, sure. Because we're all finished. We're not finished. All right, come let's have a combo. Let's have a combo. We want to have a combo. Let's have a combo. Yeah, I love it. What do you want to have a chat? I would. I would. No, I mean he's 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 shouting out things and against the family, child marriages. Do you agree with that? Is he saying the truth or he's not saying the truth? Sorry? Is he telling the truth about each other? No. Can we can we so do the discussion very systematically? Yeah, yeah, you go see it. Systematically. systematically means point by point. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to make the same argument, but I want to try and take some of the heat out of the discussion. Yeah? Is that all right? That's scary. So, so, so my, my, my question is, would you agree that nine-year-old children... Yeah, of course. Yeah. Your name is? Bob. Bob. Hi, Bob. Bro, you, 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 you made a point. And I ask everyone, Muslims yeah. included... Let's try and have a conversation. Yeah. Don't sit around this guy, innit? The, the question, so I'll, I'll let you get served. Shall we go over there, maybe? Or do you want to do it here? All right. Sure, of course. Hey, where are you going? No bold of my shell. Where are you going? Come. So you got yeah, got arguments, you've got insults. Like your prophet. Because he bro, 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 we're gonna have a debate. No, no, no. Let it go, let it go. Alright? So we're gonna try and have a conversation about the same topic. Yeah? Let's try and take a bit of heat out of the conversation. Let's get back to discussion. Yeah? So I'm going to defend the thesis that Mohammed was a paedophile, right? This brother's going to obviously defend against that thesis and argue Mohammed was not a paedophile. Everyone is served better if we listen to the arguments rather than get ourselves irate. Would you agree? Okay.